As mentioned in episode one, I unfortunately made the decision to use Jubilee clamps. I mean, much easier to work with for quick removal, but they don't really fit the boots that link the air box to the throttle body. So I'm gonna clean these up now with some vinyl rubber care, get them looking all fresh again. And just to give you an idea, I found the old bag of clips in the loft. So you can see from the thickness, let's try and lay those. The Jubilee clips are just a little bit too big and they don't quite sit in that boot. So we're going to go back to some original style clips, which should hopefully be here tomorrow. But I'm going to quickly clean these up with a vinyl rubber care and a cloth and the little mounts that go under the air box as well. I'll try and get everything looking ready for the new Carbonus install. With the rubbers cleaned up, I've now reinserted the original clips and I'll give you an idea of the thickness difference. I mean, compared to the Jubilee, it looks, <laughs> the Jubilee clip looks awful in comparison to the original. But what I need to do now is basically using this tool, clamp those back up together, but I've actually spun the bands around the other side. So it might make work a little bit more difficult to put it back together. But from the top, which we'll also show you as well, I've got the vibration mounts back in to secure it but from the top it means it all looks clean much better than the jubilee and like i say the pinch point's going to be on the back and then to remove the air box i'll have to have the clip on the top side when these go back on on to evening number two and my new clips have arrived or bands i guess you call them so i didn't end up going to bmw for the genuine ones bought these online which are very similar in design so this is the standard old one as you can see it's all bent you need a little special tool to clamp them together because they've got these little like pinch bits at the end it's like a pair of spiky prongs but these are much more straightforward so you just wrap them around and then you just use that same pinch tool as the original ones i've used on the front and the good news is as you can see they're pretty much identical to the original front ones anyway. Oh, I just dropped the box in um, size. So all I need to do is just trim the length down, which we'll do now because they're a bit too long. I've marked them out on one here, as you can see. So we'll just get the grinder on there. They're stainless steel, so they're not going to rust or corrode. Like I say, once they're on there, they're going to look just like the factory ones anyway. And the beauty was from the motor factors, I could get these straight away rather than having to drive all the way to BMW if they had them on the shelf and obviously pay an M tax for a hose clamp. So yeah, we'll um, trim those down now and then uh, should be going back in the car pretty shortly. Just quickly before I start modifying the bands, I thought I'd just show you the trumpets because I had a little look last night at this revised sick one. So obviously you've got one, two, three, four, and five. And then if we put the torch on, you can see that that one actually runs completely different in shape. I guess that's helping it pick up air off the back of the air box rather than where the dead spot is. So it sits a little bit shallower and it's got more of a, a, a rolled out trumpet design on there, which I've never seen before. So that must be what they were, is what they're referring to as the sixth trumpet having a slightly change because as you can see from the box, these ones all get a good flow, but this one's sort of tucked out the way at the back there. And I remember years ago when we was playing around with the inlet manifolds on the Clio 172s, there was a similar thing where there are advantages to making slight changes to the plenum. But obviously in this case, you haven't got a lot of room from the strut tower and the bulkhead to do that. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, but like I say, yeah, we'll get that on and... Uh...
Today's job is to get the AIT sensor plugged in quickly, which we're gonna use these horrible connector blocks, just quickly to test it on the system and make sure we've got a good reading on the new sensor. And then once that's confirmed as all clear, it will then just be a case of properly soldering it. And also, I forgot, I left the old math plug tucked in there. Oh, hello. So that needs to go, and I'm probably gonna use this point for the new AIT loom to go down under here, new hole in this shield, and then the plug can just sit there nice and out of the way, and the cable won't float about. But we also need to modify potentially the dipstick. You can just about see it down there. So the problem is when you put the CSOL box on there, you have to bend this away from where it was about here on the plenum, but really it needs to be back here looking at the Carbonus airbox mounting point. So yeah, that's gonna to be today's first jobs. So for those of you that watched the video, obviously we wired back in the sensor. Unfortunately, we was, um, for those that were keen spotters on there, we are about 18 something degrees out on the temperature sensor, on the air inlet temperature sensor. It doesn't mean it's broken. What's happened is, is I've gone back to the original CSL intake sensor and where it was set up for the GSR air box, it used a different brand of air inlet temperature sensor. So the scaling's different. So having a quick look online, it looks like I'm gonna to have to use a company called ECU Works. I've heard of them from the past with stuff with the U92 and hopefully I'll be able to change the scaling back to the CSL spec sensor. So we're gonna carry on with the wiring fit repair anyway, and obviously remove that math plug, get the airbox on, because it'll all be just done on the computer at a later date. But you can't drive the car, because like I say, it's reading about 20 degrees off, which will make the fueling <laughs> well, well, well wrong. So the horrible connector blocks are finally gone from my life and everything is heat shrinked and soldered underneath there. So good as gold. And I've also attached the AIT loom to the old, I think they're the old airbox mounting points, just loosely put some uh, cable ties around that. And then obviously we've got the hole in there and then it'll just come out there. So it's all out of the way and enough flex, not that the engine moves that much anyway. But like I say, that's all now nice and tidy. We can put that back together. I use the original math sensor locating point and the clip to put that in there. So it all looks pretty factory to be honest with you. And then like I said, we've just got to work out the dipstick now because before I had it rubbing on the airbox, which I don't really want on this one. Obviously you can't mount it to the body of the car because as the engine rocks, this will end up just splitting over time. So we need to find somewhere that's safe without scratching the airbox.
So with the first part of the airbox in, I've managed to absolutely shred my hands to bits, clipping that breather back in underneath whilst trying to keep the airbox in place and not damage anything. Also had to do the two 10 mil nuts on the underside, pinch the clamps, much better than those Jubilee clips. Like I say, lovely and solid on there now because the GSR only uses one of the mounting points underneath. So yeah, we'll just go on to fitting the snorkel. I've clipped back the dipstick. It's not gonna stay there like that. It's just to keep out of the way when I put the uh, front half of the airbox snorkel in. And the CSL doesn't actually run this. I'm tempted to get rid of it because it rubbed on the GSR. The only problem is it looks like it runs through the coolant pipe so you'd have to take the top hose off or cut it and permanently destroy it but we'll put the AIT in you can see now I've got my loom once the sensor goes in there nice and clipped out of the way get in there And that's it everything installed it's all finished as i say, i've used that silicon pipe in there just to stop it rubbing on there it's lovely and solid and then now we just need to go inside see if i can get this ecu work software downloaded because my laptop's pretty old and refused to do anything normally and then uh, yeah fingers crossed we can get some normal ait readings from the new sensor and it'll be ready to start so back in the house the trusty hewlett packard laptop is soldiering on and I've downloaded the ECU Works tool. Now, as you can see here, we've got the air inlet temperature rescale. You can do all sorts of other cool things as well, changing the warm up light procedures, few bits and bobs. So I'm looking forward to having a little play with this actually. There's some cool bits, uh, sort of sections and options on here. But I so say the main thing for purchasing this today is to get the air inlet temperature scale working. So as we've got IAT sensor rescale, which we're gonna do, I'm gonna go out with BMW Flash and do a read on the car and what I will do is just quickly show you this is from the ECU Works website it's just a full step-by-step -step, which I'll link in the description and say I've no affiliation with the company but looks like they're going to be the option to get me uh, running the car properly so we'll go and get a read now and then uh, fingers crossed we can get the license today if I send it off and get it paid for which it looks like it's going to be about £20. I don't know whether that's still the current price, but a bargain really for the adjustment and the ease. And uh, hopefully I can get that air inlet temperature sensor reading correctly.
Good morning YouTube and you join me on a lovely cloudy Sunday morning in the UK. The E46 is done as you saw from the video relatively speaking pretty straightforward to swap it over. I've shredded my hand to bits trying to get under the air box and we had that issue with the air in temperature air inlet temperature sensor where unfortunately it was calibrated to run with another aftermarket one and at that point I was like I don't know how I'm going to fix this on the driveway this is a coding issue but I did remember seeing something from a company called ECU Works and went on the website there it all was ready to go and oh man Martin legend honestly I was like it's Saturday afternoon there is no way he is going to respond to get this unlocked with the license I thought it was going to be a Monday to Friday and within 15 minutes boom license through recoded it as you saw air inlet temperature is perfect because it was reading I think it was at 18 19 degrees less so you've got to be a little bit careful because obviously if I had have run that I'm pretty sure it would have started but it would have ran very rich because it would have thought obviously it's a lot cooler out than it actually is so yeah awesome awesome stuff and uh, we'll go for a quick pull with the windows down so you guys can hear it quickly as well not that it's going to be a great deal difference but I think it's a little bit louder but ultimately it could just be in my head because placebo effect is a wonderful thing. But yeah, really chuffed to bits with the fit and finish. Got to do a little bit with the heat shield cowl on the front, but other than that, all done. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If so, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing. Still plenty more to come from the E46 M3. Next up is gonna be the thermostat change as the temperature just keeps rocking back on the water a little bit. And I've got to modify that cowl anyway and remove the upper hose. So I might as well do it all in one hit through the winter. But yeah, until next time, thanks for watching.